Hi and welcome back to another video today. Not an Intel topic anymore because we did a lot of Alder Lake videos recently. Today we will talk about our Ryzen long-term testing which we started earlier this year. To remind you we started three setups with 5700X two times and once with a 5800X CPU in there. And we performed several tests during that time period to see if there is an impact on the CPU lifetime if we heavily overclock those CPUs and also if we um, use very high voltages on the CPU. To first talk about the usage we did over the previous roughly seven months. Here you can see a chart. We started with Prime95, roughly 1600 hours of Prime95 blend test. Then 3 dmark with roughly 2000 hours, but 3 dmark is not the entire 3 dmark because we didn't do any kind of GPU load. It was purely the CPU stress test in a loop test configuration. The intention for this was to have a high CPU stress followed by an idle time of about 5 to 6 seconds and then repeating the CPU test again. Then we also had the Shia mining project in between with about 500 hours of CPU time. And then we also had an idle time of roughly 216 hours. But I also want to add that there is a certain error in our time measurement in here because we had three or four instances where some of those systems were doing Windows updates overnight. And then when I came back in the morning, they were not running the load test anymore. So it could be that the Windows update was performed like three hours ago or maybe seven hours ago. So there is an error margin of, I would say, one to two percent when it comes to the idle and the load timing in here because of those three, four instances where we had the Windows updates performing in the background. Thank you, Microsoft, for that. And apart from that, but I checked the error log, so it was not a blue screen or anything. It was not a failure of the CPU. Everything was still running stable. But to give you an insight what kind of possible errors we could have in our time measurement. If we add up the time the CPUs were spending under load, it's about 4,150 hours, which is about three to four years of usage if you consider that your CPU would be used heavily for three to four hours per day, which I think is quite realistic, even if you would compare this to maybe six or seven hours of gaming per day, this should be comparable because three to four hours, 100% CPU load, is much more heavy for the CPU than like six or seven hours of gaming. The focus on, during gaming will not be on the CPU, it will be on the GPU. That's why I guess this is at least three or four years, maybe even five years of usage. Seasonic, the heart of your system. The setups for our long-term testing consisted mainly of the RG Strix B550 eGaming motherboards. We had three of these in total and two of them contained the 5600X and, two of, and one of them contained the 5800X. As memory, we used those Corsair Vengeance LPX modules, 3200 C16, 16GB, 16 I mean, that's, that was more than enough for the testing we did. And if we just check the fan underneath, I would say Sheik is responsible for that, at least partially. There's some good dust in there. And that's what happened because I kept those setups open on the floor. Like they were not sitting inside any case or anything. They were not protected from any kind of dust filters. And that's, that's what I guess happens after like half a year. I marked each mainboard with the CPU in there. So this one contained a 5600X and that was the three last digit of the serial number. So I won't mix anything up if we are now going to compare the results. One thing up front before we get to the testing, and that might be boring for you because it's not as sensational, but nothing died. Everything is still alive. Every main board, every CPU cooler, which is not a surprise, but we picked the A500 air coolers because we knew that it's very unlikely that the air cooler will fail. They usually don't fail, but if you use an AIO, the pump could fail, for example. That's something we would or wanted to avoid. That's why we picked the air cooling units. Memory sticks are still working, SSDs are still working, and also the PSUs are still working. Uh, we used the Focus PX650 PSUs from Seasonic. All of them are also still in great condition. All of them are still working. But there are different types of like degradation and CPU failures you could have and that's what we want to check out eventually. One of the reasons why we even started with the entire project was because some people were not happy with some voltages I recommended in some of my overclocking guides. And 
yeah, I mean, I'm often tending to use rather high voltages because then you get the max out of the frequency, obviously. But then there are people saying, yeah, but if you use more than 1.25 volt on TSMC 7 nanometer, your CPU will heavily degrade over time. And that's what we want to find out eventually. I didn't test the CPUs yet, so I don't know if there was any kind of degradation that happened. It could be, and we will find out. All of the CPUs, the 25600X and the 15800X, were all running all the time at 4.5 gigahertz at 1.45 volt, which is much more voltage than they are required to run this specific frequency. But it was to, if there's, a, if there's degradation going on, then this would be a multiplicator for this factor, I would guess. So back then I noted down um, values I tested with the CPUs, like the minimum voltage required to run 4.7 gigahertz Cinebench R20 with these CPUs all core. And for the 5600X, it was 1.23 and 1.26 volt. And for the 5800X, it was also 1.26 volt. And I also noted down the temperatures back then and also the power consumption. So we know that everything will be in line for testing. Back then it was tested with a 240 AIO. That's also what we will use. And we will also use a different mainboard for the evaluation and for the testing. Theoretically, it could be that the main boards might be degrading or there could be an influence from, I don't know, the VRMs on the performance of the CPU. That's something we just want to avoid. That's why we will do the CPU analysis eventually with the Crosshair 8 Dark Hero. That's also the board we used back then. There is still the same BIOS on there, should actually be still the same settings should make it a lot easier for us. I will disassemble all of the systems, get the CPUs out, and one by one we will put them in the Dark Hero and see what happens. I took out the CPUs from the systems, already assembled our test rig. One thing I want to add is that I unfortunately don't have the 240 AIO anymore I used back then. Uh, so I'm just using the 280 version of this. I used the 241 for a different build, but temperature shouldn't matter much anyway for our test results. I'm just running the second test because I started this for the German version of the video. I'm just running Cinebench R20 three times in a row to check if it's stable for that frequency and voltage. The CPU is running 4.7 across all of the eight cores and it's set manually to 1.26 volt with Turbo V core. It's also using the same BIOS version as back then, 3205. Memory is running at 3600C18. Load line calibration is also the same as last time with level four. We can see the peak package power draw so far was 119 watt. Back then, because we used a different AIO and it was a bit warmer, we had a peak temperature of 85 degrees Celsius and 129 roughly. But so far, this is looking awesome. This looks great. So that's the third test in a row. But I mean, if the CPU was garbage, if it was dead, if it heavily degraded, it was not able to just easily repeat this this way. We were getting closer in the end. It peaked out at about 80.3 degrees Celsius. It's still five degrees lower than our previous test and it's about seven watt lower than our original test, but I guess that's still very comparable. But so far, looks great. Now moved over to testing the first 5600X, which was with the serial number 197. That is the worst of the two. It could still run 1.26, 4.7 gigahertz across all of the cores, which is what I'm running right now. That's the first Cinebench test. I have noted it down with a peak package power draw of 109 and a peak CPU temperature of 81 degrees Celsius. Guess that's pretty close to the original testing. And that's the first Cinebench run. We will perform three. One thing I want to add is that it's maybe a bit unfair for the 5600X in regards that it has two less cores than the 5800X, which means that R20 is running much longer on the CPU than it was on 5800X. But just looking at this, I guess even two tests would be absolutely sufficient because otherwise if the CPU heavily degraded, it was not able, able to run this. But let's see what happens after the third one. So much about that, so it crashed on the third attempt. Interesting. I'm going to repeat the test with a slightly increased V-core, going from 1262 to 1268. It's a very slight increase. Let's see if this will be fine for the three runs. <laughs> 
Interesting, so it crashed again on the uh, third attempt. We needed three attempts in total. I finally adjusted the voltage to 1.275 and this passed three runs of Cinebench. Now switch over to the third CPU. It's another 5600X, serial number ends with 201. This one could pass three times at 4.7, 1.23 V-Core. Interesting, Cinebench also straight crashed. Okay. Seems like the system is still alive though, so we can maybe slightly increase it. So Simbench crashed again. Just double checking temperature and power consumption, but that seems to be very much in line with our original testing. We had a peak of 99 back then on the power consumption right here. And we had a peak of 71 degrees Celsius on the CPU temperature. He almost made it, he just failed right at the end of the third attempt. So even with 1.26 volt, the CPU won't work. And even with 1.27, wow. All right. So now it finally worked out. Very interesting, but at the same time also very, very mixed results. And I'm going to explain why. The 5800X just works exactly the same as on the first day. So you could draw the conclusion that there is no degradation at all. Then the 5600X, the first one, had a difference of 20 millivolt, which I personally would consider measurement tolerance. That's not really much. The second 5600X, needs 40 millivolt more than previously. So that could be a slight degradation. But now before people are jumping on the TSMC 7 nanometer is degrading over time train, because that's not what I would agree on, we are using a condition, like a very, very artificial condition, 1.45 volt, 4.5 gigahertz, and we're heavily loading the CPU all the time. That's something you have not in gaming. And then you're looking at a 5800X, and it did not care at all. But one of the 5600X might have cared, but only to a very, very small portion. And 40 millivolt in my world still is not much. Which means that if you used this, let's, let's assume that you used this for four years in this condition, and now you need 40 millivolt more to reproduce the same frequency. I mean, just increase the voltage and it's still fine. It might still be fine to run for another one or two years. And then you managed to run five years at a high overclock and a high voltage, I guess that's totally fair. If you compare to that, you might estimate that your stock CPU will last for seven to 10 years and your heavily overclocked CPU lasts for five years. I guess in my world, that would be totally fine. If a heavily overclocked CPU can live for five years because after five years upgrading would be totally fine to me. What you have to keep in mind though, that just statistically speaking, your possibility or your rate of hard failures will increase. And that's something we didn't see with three CPUs. We would have needed, I don't know, a hundred or a thousand CPUs to see how many of those are failing over a certain time period versus the different condition with the increased frequency and voltage and how many are failing then. Three CPUs are not the best indicator to judge the, the hard failure condition. So that's something you still have to keep in mind. There's still a possibility that your CPU will just randomly fail in that time period. But overall, I would say, because people still think that 7 nanometers sounds so small and some people think that this is a fragile technology or whatever, this is not fragile. Those CPUs are great, they can take a lot. They can take a lot of voltage and frequency and even if you use it heavily. If you use it for gaming, I think this is absolutely fine for even four or five years if it's heavily overclocked. So I guess that's a, it's a very, very good technology. 
And also, if we're maybe in four or five years and it's like Intel 20 angstrom and we're looking back at this, you will not look at 700 meter the same way you're looking at it now. You're looking at it now like it's, it's the, the smallest technology and it's maybe a fragile technology. But I remember people telling me exactly the same thing when Ivory Bridge was out. So yeah, I guess it's still the same thing. But overall, I would say there's nothing you have to worry about if you're using a decent overclock with taking care of the voltages, not increasing it too much, then I would say this is fine. I would say it's fine to use something like 1.35, 1.4 volt. And just if you use this for gaming, this should be absolutely fine. Okay. Not much we could draw from this, but I'm also happy that nothing really failed and the degradation is not that terrible or anything. That's a very, very good sign. If you want to see more like this, if you want me to do the same with, for example, the recent Intel Alder Lake CPUs, then let me know and we might be able to set something up. All right. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye-bye.